We have come to the end of the road, the final video in this series about travel Spanish. We started off three videos ago with the bare minimum method. Learning Spanish is impossible. Nobody can just learn Spanish. Well, the bare minimum method is a specific three-step process for learning just the Spanish you'll need for a specific situation. Learn how to ask directions, you can do that. Learn how to get a ticket at the train station, you can do that. And that's exactly what we did in the last two videos. First, there were the three questions to ask directions in Spanish, then you got the three questions for getting information at the bus and train station in Spanish. The links to all three of those videos are below this video or in the description. And if you keep mastering specific situation after specific situation in Spanish, before you know it, you'll actually speak Spanish. So in this video, we're going to continue with another situation you'll often encounter when traveling. This time, we're ordering food in Spanish. <laughs> Hola, I'm Jordan, and this is a Spanish quickie. Fast, easy Spanish lessons from somebody who speaks your language. To me, I really don't think traveling would be nearly as much fun if each country didn't have different foods. The food is one of the best parts for sure. Unfortunately, it's not the easiest situation to master. In the last two videos, I gave you systems or shortcuts, three questions, five steps, that just plain work. They're virtually flawless. But with ordering food, that's just not possible. There are way too many ingredients and different methods of preparing things. The only way to know everything is to memorize every word. But do you want to go to those unknown, hole-in-the-wall, not touristy restaurants? You should. They usually taste better, they're cheaper, and they're much more of a cultural experience. Well, fortunately, over the years, I noticed that all food situations follow the same three steps. So, in my premium course, Travel Spanish Crash Course, in the module dedicated to ordering food, I made a video for each step, showing you exactly what to do along with video clips from Spain. Well, actually, I made a video for step number one, which is enter and situate yourself, pretty straightforward. And I made a video for step number three, pay and leave, also pretty straightforward. But for step number two, I made four different videos because step two is the hardest step and the most important, doing the actual ordering. Since step one and step three are so straightforward, today we're going to focus on step two, the first of the four videos I made for step two. Then at the end of of this video, I'll tell you how you can get the second for free. Cool? Okay, remember, this is step number two. So you've already done step number one, which is enter and situate yourself. You've gotten a menu if that's appropriate, if a menu is available. If you know what you want already, ordering is very simple. Just say what you want. If you want a Coke, just say una Coca-Cola, one Coke. To be polite, add a por favor, which means please. And I covered in greetings and being polite, part one. Link is below or in the description. Hola, buenas. Una Coca-Cola. Easy enough, no? And like I also taught you in Greetings and Being Polite, part two, whenever you order something, you can say me pones at the beginning to sound like a real pro. That literally means will you put me, but that's what they say for will you give me. So that would be me pones una Coca-Cola, will you give me a Coke? Hola. Me pones una Coca-Cola? You can order anything this way. Here I am in Sevilla ordering una caña. ¿Y de beber qué quieres? Una caña. A caña in Spain is a beer from the tap, usually quite small. I like them for that reason, actually. If you say cerveza, you'll normally get a beer in a bottle. If you say caña, you'll get a small beer from the tap. In that one, I knew he wanted my drink order because I heard the word bebes. Whenever you hear beber or bebes, those both mean drink, basically. But in this case, you can tell just by how he used his hands. ¿Y de beber qué quieres? Una caña. Now, beber or to drink, that's mainly used in Spain, while the word tomar or to take is usually used for to drink in Latin America. Although I must say that's not a definite pattern. It really just depends on where you are and who you're with. But if you say beber or tomar for to drink anywhere in the world, you'll be understood perfectly. Now, if you want more than one of something, you just change the una or one to whatever number you want. Here I am at the market in Barcelona ordering dos manzanas or two apples. Hola. Hola, dos manzanas, por favor. Dos, por favor. I knew the word for apples is manzanas, but if you didn't, don't worry. It was written right there on the little sign. A lot of places are like this, actually. The market, bakeries, supermarkets, lots of things have labels. Hola, dos manzanas, por favor. Dos, por favor. 
In this next clip, I ask for un napolitana de chocolate, but it's supposed to be una napolitana, not un, but he still gave it to me. Take a look. Uh, un napolitana de chocolate, por favor. If you saw the free bonus video called Mistakes Are Good, if not, the link is below this video or in the description, you know that it just doesn't matter if you say un instead of uno or uno instead of una. This is a mistake that will literally never prevent you from being understood. If you can get it right, great. But if you can't, don't sweat it even one little bit. Uh, un napolitana de chocolate, por favor. I just read that right off the little card that was sitting next to my napolitana de chocolate. I always have problems with that word. Don't worry if you do too. Like always, usually just saying the beginning of the word, like napoli, will get you what you want. And depending on the situation and what you're ordering, you wouldn't always say the number. Sometimes you would just say or read what you want, like from a menu at a restaurant. Los ravioli. Raviolitis. That was me just reading right off the menu there. Los ravioli, raviolitis. I'm sure I said that wrong, but he totally understood me, obviously. Los ravioli, raviolitis. Now, let's say you're sitting at a bar, a cafe, a restaurant, or in a bakery even. You finish your Coke or your beer or your whatever, and you want another one. You can get it by saying otro or otra, followed by whatever you want. Both words mean the same thing, another. And don't worry if you mix them up. Again, it'll stop you from being understood, never. Otra caña, por favor. There I was at the same bar, cafe, restaurant, whatever. It was awesome, in Sevilla. I wanted another caña, so I said, otra caña, por favor. Another small beer from the tap. Otra caña, por favor. If you want to know what something costs before you order it, all you have to do is ask cuánto cuesta or cuánto es. They both mean how much does it cost. You saw this question in the last video too, at the bus and train station. Hola. Cuánto cuesta? Gracias. Even though that was an ice cream stand, I held up a little bottle of water and asked cuánto cuesta, how much does it cost? She answered un euro, one euro. Hola. Cuánto cuesta? Gracias. Now here I am at a real ice cream place. This was in Sevilla. It's called Rayas. It has at least a couple locations. Google it if you're there. It's awesome. Hola. Cuánto cuesta un cono? I asked, ¿Cuánto cuesta un cono? How much does a cone cost? I had never used that word before, cono, but I heard a bunch of people before me say it and that sure sounds like cone, so I went for it. It worked. Her answer was dos cincuenta, two fifty. I later saw everything written on the wall. Oh well. Hola. ¿Cuánto cuesta un cono? Dos cincuenta. Now I'm going to teach you something that'll at least double your ordering power without taxing your brain too much. If you want to order more than one item at the same time, all you have to do is add the word and. I know, crazy, right? In Spanish, and is e. A little weird, just a little old y all alone, but you pronounce it e. So say the first item like we've been doing, then say e, then say the second item. In this next clip, I order un cortado y un vaso de agua. Un cortado is a type of coffee. It's smaller than a normal coffee, but not as small as an espresso. Then un vaso de agua is a glass of water. When you say glass of water, it implies from the tap, which is both free and fine to drink in all of Spain. Hola. Un cortado y vaso de agua. Me siento afuera. Okay, gracias. See, you can definitely do this. It's really straightforward. At the end there, I added, me siento afuera. I'm sitting outside. I had been sitting outside for a while and nobody came to take my order. So I went in, ordered, and told him, I'm sitting outside. Me siento afuera. Hola. Un cortado y vaso de agua. Me siento afuera. Okay, gracias. Now, instead of a coffee, I'm gonna order un tinto y un vaso de agua. Un tinto is a red wine in Spain. Vaso de agua still means glass of water. Buenos días, ¿qué le ponemos? Buenos días. Un tinto y vaso de agua. Un tinto? Sí, y un vaso de agua. I ordered just like I showed you. She confirmed un tinto. I said sí, and we were off. Buenos días, ¿qué le ponemos? Buenos días. Un tinto y vaso de agua. Un tinto? Sí, y un vaso de agua. I should warn you, tinto is red wine in Spain, but when I was in Colombia a few years ago, I was surprised to learn that tinto is black coffee there. Tinto is just the word for tint. They use it for dark wine in Spain and dark coffee in Colombia. This next clip includes two of my favorite things, bocadillos and jamón. In Spain, a bocadillo is a sandwich on a baguette, like a sub or hoagie. I love them. And my favorite kind of bocadillo is a bocadillo de jamón. Jamón is ham, but ham is different in Spain. They have the same ham we do, 
do, but they also have jamón serrano. Jamón serrano is cured, not cooked. It's sort of like prosciutto, but better. I definitely suggest having a bogadillo de jamón or two when you're in Spain. Here's how you'd order one. Una Coca-Cola y un bogadillo de jamón, por favor. I was at a place called El Museo del Jamón there, the ham museum. At first, I thought it was just a tourist trap, but then I later discovered it has really good ham and at decent prices. They sell ham to take home with you, too. Una Coca-Cola y un bocadillo de jamón, por favor. I should tell you that bocadillo doesn't always mean sandwich, in Spain for sure, but when I was in Mexico recently, I saw that word used for a torpedo looking cookie thing at a coffee shop. I'm really not sure what bocadillo means literally. If anybody wants to tell me, that would be appreciated. Spain is also where churros started. They're most popular in Madrid. I wouldn't leave Spain without at least trying churros con chocolate or churros with chocolate. Hola, buenos dias. Un, un café con leche y churros con chocolate. I didn't see many other people drinking coffee with their churros because the chocolate is pretty thin, like a thick hot chocolate, so it would be two hot drinks. But I don't care, I love my café con leche or coffee with milk. Hola, buenos días. Un, un café con leche y churros con chocolate. Por favor. Another one of my favorite Spanish foods is a tostada de tomate, or toast of tomato. This is toasted bread, usually a baguette, where they scrape or rub a tomato real hard all over one side, then usually drizzle it with Spanish olive oil and sprinkle it with a little salt. Here's how you'd get one of those. Hola. Una tostada de tomate? Sí. Y café con leche. Sometimes they'll just give you the toast, the tomato pulp stuff, and the olive oil, and you make it yourself. Una tostada de tomate? Sí. Y café con leche. Perfecto. Gracias. Es posible que de la misma forma las elecciones de 1999 Man, I want a tostada de tomate right now. Okay, that's it for part one of step two. If you want to keep going, be sure to get the free bonus video that covers part two of step two. You can get that below this video if you're on my website or go to gringoespanol.com slash pointing. And if that's still not enough, you need to enroll in the Travel Spanish Crash Course. There are over 60 videos in that course, just like this one. You'll learn tons of cool tricks and systems along with more video examples from Spain so you can get what you want or need when traveling and have the best trip possible. Okay, I'll see you next time. Hasta luego. Adios, amigo.